everyone and welcome to Badminton Weekly with me Mo Shumi Dutt. I'm filling in for Jasmine Lim as Lucky Girls away in Paris delving into all things Olympics. Of course, the players are there too for the Yonex French Open. But that's for later on in the show. Right now, we're going to talk about the first stop on the European Tour and that is the Yonex German Open. And to talk us through that is Ashwini Ponapa, a double specialist and of course recently crowned Asian champion. Welcome back to the show, Ashwini. Hey Mosh, thanks for having me on the show. Now the Europeans definitely put on a show in Germany with two ending the week at the top step of the podium. Christo Popov being one of them after he clinched his maiden title in the men's singles category. Now how crucial will this win be for him Ashwini considering that he's in competition with his brother Toma Jr. for a spot at the Olympics? It's not easy competing against your compatriots, let alone your um, own brother to compete for a spot for the Olympics. And as of now, both of them are going neck to neck with Christo Popov going ahead, having won the German Open. So as tricky as it is, it's getting very intense and it's going to be very interesting to see which of the two brothers is going to make it to the qualification, which having won the tournament at German Open, it's a huge deal, especially since it's going towards the end of the qualification period. And it's really important how both of them perform the next couple of tournaments because both of them have tough draws in the upcoming tournaments. Well, it definitely sets up for a very exciting race till the very end, but focusing on his winning run in Germany, what stood out for you most in Christo's game? I think for me, what impressed me most about Christo Popo was the way he played all his matches. He's got a fantastic cross-court smash, which is pretty deceptive, especially from his forehand side. I think he makes use of his left-hand game style quite well there. He's got a lot of deception, especially that cross-court forehand smash for me. But also the fact that he plays men's doubles alongside his brother, he's got a bit of doubles game into a singles style of play, where he rushes into the net, he's quite fast at the net with anticipating shots. He did that quite well. He tempered his game rhythm really well throughout, but he wasn't going too fast. But when he did get that opportunity to rush, he was taking those chances. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh, as I said, I, I, I didn't believe it. Uh, at first, I was like, oh my God, first title. Um, you know, if someone said me this to f first day of the week, like Monday or Tuesday, uh, I wouldn't believe it because, uh, you know, uh, it seems too far sometimes. and. Uh, well, obviously, the, those points are very good for, for the qualifications, uh, but there's still uh, four or five tournaments and uh, they are very important for, for everybody. Uh, it's not done. Um, we have to still perform and uh, that's, that's going to be my goal for the next, uh, next weeks. Just like Christo, Mia Blickfeld will also take plenty of positives from her week in Mülheim, where she dropped just one game on the way to the women's singles title. Now, did you see more grit and toughness in her win this time? She definitely looked great to, throughout the German Open. I thought she played with a lot of confidence, a lot of flair. Hadn't lost a set up on, except for the semi-final match where she lost a set against Michelle Lee. But that final match, she played a solid match. For me, I feel like Mia's got a little bit of variation in her game from what I've seen her play in the past. She's always been a bit on the attacking side, but I feel like she's got a lot more attacking variations from the back. She's got a nice slice drop, she's got a nice half smash, and I feel like her half smashes and her slices have been very effective because it's caught her opponents off guard. But having said that, she's been really fast on court this whole week. She's been on top of the net. She's been taking charge of every single match that she's played and yeah, it's, it's been very nice to see because she kind of reminds me a little bit of Tina Bond, especially with the way she smashes and moves to the net and that's been very interesting for me to see. I mean, Mia said in her interview that she is in a better place mentally because you could work really hard and put in all the work off court, on court and if you're not mentally in the right space, it can affect you, especially in crucial moments. And I would say the edge that Mia had this tournament was probably her mental uh, space and where she's at and that definitely added to a lot more confidence in the strokes that she played and the game that she played. I'm very happy and uh, I'm proud of myself and now I'll just keep going. Um, this is just like uh, another like motivation step for me that I can win a Super 300 tournament. Uh, my last one I won was in 19 in Spain, so it has been a while. Um, so, yeah, 
I will take this with me the next three weeks for the next tournaments, and then I will, yeah, keep improving and keep my consistency. Mental toughness was definitely in play in the men's doubles final when Li Jiehui and Yang Po Suan defeated He Ji Ting and Ren Xiang Yu. The hour-long match went down to the wire. Now, what do you think gave Li and Yang the crucial edge here? To me, I would say the last couple of points in that match gave the Chinese Taipei pair <laughs> the edge because when they were going neck to neck, it was like those two crucial mistakes from the Chinese pair that literally changed everything and gave them that win. But having said that, the entire match was extremely thrilling. They were going neck to neck, long rallies, tricky shots and smashes being taken around the back. So it was a very exciting match. Uh, Lee and Yang played brilliantly. Now, I would also say that her and Ren played really well, so you can't take that away. But it's just that last two points that made a world of a difference between who won and who lost. So having played such high badminton and probably one of the tightest matches of the tournament, yeah, Lee and Yang came up on top, having been a bit more cons consistent towards the end. Well, this Yangzi Mark Lanfus' Olympic qualification has not been the smoothest, with a stubborn injury still plaguing him. Despite that, Mark is in the mix for a men's doubles as well as a mixed doubles spot in the race to Paris. So let's hear from the German as he talks about his ups and downs in this journey. Um, actually, we just like trying to play a lot of tournaments in the beginning and score some uh, yeah have some good results there in the beginning but uh, yeah unfortunately my my knee was not so good so start of olympic qualification i was kind of injured um, and i had to pull myself through but uh, yeah now slowly getting back to my normal level but the the plan was to score quite fast some very good results I think first we have to see how the qualification is going. Like if we qualify in mixed doubles and in men's doubles, um, I might have a tough period before Olympics again, where I try to build up quite hard. Um, and if not, there is another plan. So if it's just one discipline, uh, it's a little different than if I play two. So I will see how the qualification will end and then kind of trying now to use the time as best as possible to build up but being good in Batman as well. I am always a big fan of uh, having big goals and uh, or big dreams as well and um, yeah, some might say uh, it's a uh, with your ranking, it might be stupid, but I, I just go for the for the medal. Uh, if I compete at a tournament, I want to get a medal and win there. But uh, Olympics, for sure, my goal is to win a medal. Yeah, I feel like we are on the right track of getting back to our best level. Um, even though I know it's tough because there are a lot of good pairs, and if we don't have the best week, it's very tough to win the medal. But uh, I believe we can do that. So uh, this is my goal. Now the European leg continues with the second Super 750 tournament of the year, the Yonex French Open. This year's edition is one that is highly anticipated as it's being held in the same venue as the Paris Olympics, the newly constructed Adidas Arena. Now first of Ashwini, I have to ask, what are you looking forward to the most at this arena? 
I think the most important thing that every single player would be looking for is getting into the court. And I mean, I haven't been into the court yet. I haven't seen the main hall. I haven't been into the main hall yet. I've just been at the practice hall. So European arenas normally aren't very drifty. It's fairly nice. You don't have a lot of wind in the arena. So that's something that I would expect in France as well here in Paris. Normally when you're playing here, you don't have the AC on. So it's not like you have blowers from different corners. So I'd expect it to not be too windy and do too drifty here. The women's doubles draw appears exceptionally competitive with plenty of mouth-watering clashes in the opening round. Now you and your partner, Tanisha Crasto, are set to play your teammates, Teresa Jolly and Gayatri Gopich and Pulela, with both of you, of course, vying for a spot at the Olympics. Now, how much of an added challenge is this? It's never easy when you're playing against your compatriots because we're training together, we're working together and we're also competing against each other. So it's tricky when you end up having to play against each other, especially in the first round because that means one of the two is going to go out. I mean, if you meet later in, in the later stage of the tournament, it's always nicer. So it's, it's tricky mentally, emotionally and uh, yeah, that's what makes it a lot more interesting when you're competing and playing against your compatriots. There's a crucial all-Japanese clash in the opening round of the women's singles category when Nozomi Okuhara takes on Aya Ohori. Both, of course, are vying for the second Japanese spot. Now, with how they've been performing lately, how do you see this one playing out? So, currently, Aya Ohori is the one who is in the highest spot in the Olympic ranking and is the most favored at present to qualify for the Olympics but um, they've had a couple of meetings this year itself in the last couple of months having played against each other twice already with Okuhara having won once and Ayahori having won once so this is going to be their third meeting this year and at the last meeting where Ayahori beat Okuhara so I would say currently looking at the form that Ayo Hori has been in, I would say she is a bit more um, better prepared in my mind, in my opinion, because of the way I've seen her play, to play the first round match against Okuhara at the French Open. And finally, the men's singles category also has a handful of intriguing clashes in the opening round. Now, who do you think needs the biggest boost here? And who especially will you be keeping an eye on? For me, the first round match with Victor Axelson playing Priya and Shurajawat is an interesting match because Victor is getting back from an injury and Priyanshu is an up-and-coming youngster from India who is quite strong and tricky with his game style. So this is going to be the first meeting between the two of them and Priyanshu is not the easiest first round match to play, I would say, and anything can happen because players aren't quite used to the court conditions. So yeah, that's an interesting match for me. And also to see how Chris, um, Jonathan Christie is going to do in this tournament, having been the reigning champion at the French Open, and to see if Christopher Falls can carry on his great, good form, having won the German Open. He's got a tough first round here against Shiuchi, it would be interesting to see if having won the German Open, the confidence is going to rub off in this tournament as well. Well, you set it up really nicely for us, Ashwini, and that brings us to the end of the show, of course. Thank you so much for being with us again. Thank you for having me, Mosh. Now, for you at home, don't forget to mark your calendars for March the 5th. That's when the Yonex French Open gets underway all the way until the 10th of March, of course. And if you're on the go, not to worry, you can always catch the latest news, match updates and highlights on the BWF app badminton for you. Who do you think will shine the brightest at the newly constructed Adidas Arena? Let us know on our YouTube and Facebook pages, along with your thoughts and comments, of course. Until next time, goodbye.